Alrighty folks, Rob here from SmokingPit.com. In this vlog, I'm going to go ahead and answer uh, a couple other questions I've received. <clears throat> um, basically both of them were on building a fire and, and, and how to get clean smoke. And, and uh, what they're after is, you know, avoiding that white, thick, billowing smoke that kind of puts a bitter taste on your, on your meat. Um, specifically with the, with the Wichita, one of, them's, one of the folks is a Wichita owner, so... I happen to have that pit. Um, there's a couple ways, a couple things you can do. Um, some folks like to use a basket where they can actually pile up their uh, lump. <clears throat> some use just regular charcoal. And then they'll put chunks of wood in there and it's staggered. It's mixed in. So it's like they call it the minion method. You light it on top and it burns down like that. <clears throat> um, in, in these pits like this, I, I, I don't really do that. It's really good for, for doing that with UDSs, um, which is a acronym for Ugly Drum Smoker. And some of those are actually pretty sexy looking, damn nice looking rigs. But uh, <clears throat> what we're going to do here, I start off with a small pile of lump. And then uh, I go to, and right here I'm using peach, but I go to uh, using some... Uh, Usually a fruit wood, peach, cherry, um, I really like orange wood too, but <clears throat> I'll start off with a couple pieces, like right there, and I'll throw in, you know, three, pie three pieces of uh, stick wood like this, and uh, that'll be my fire. and. I'll come out about every hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes. Um, I run it right about 250, let it at max. Then it, it'll drop down to about 215. Then I'll throw some more wood on and let it crawl back up. Um, I start off with the vent over here, wide open. And then once I get my fire and pit up to temp, then I'll close this to, uh, halfway just like that and run it right there <clears throat> so basically what I'm doing I'm using a smaller amount of fuel but I'm burning a hotter fire and since I'm burning a hotter fire it's going to be a cleaner burning fire you'll see on the stack over here that I'm going to have a nice thin blue smoke coming out okay so we'll go ahead and open the door and uh, we'll get this going and I'm going to be doing some reseasoning here because I cleaned off some creosote on this end of the pit. So uh, we'll just we won't be cooking any food. We'll just be uh, reseasoning this thing. Um, but let's get started. Never use lighter fluid. Most folks know that. It'll leave a nasty taste in your pit that you won't get out. I'm using the wicked lump here. And if you don't use your pit a lot in the winter time, it's not really good to just let them sit. I, you know, even if it's for building a, f a fire in this firebox here to um, maybe grill some steaks real quick or something, I'll uh, fire this thing up every every couple weeks or so and uh, dry out any moisture that's in, that gets in the metal. Hey folks, we've got our uh, lump burning pretty good there. And now what we'll do is we'll uh, flatten it out a little bit. And then we'll lay some uh, peach wood up here. let that stuff get burning. Now I don't close the lid right away and, and even when throughout my cook I don't close the lid right away. I let the bark catch on fire and burn some of that crap off and these thick pits they're not going to drop in temp that much. But I let them get, get caught fire real well and get some of that stuff. Some people remove the bark, I don't mess with it. And another thing I'll point out right now is, 
you notice we're using a little bit of lump. We got we got we got our uh, fruit wood on there, or what we call our flavored hardwood. Um, when we'll cook like this until the meat hits about 145 degrees. When that occurs, as soon as we hit that level, you can you can start peeling back on on the the expensive flavored wood, um, and start burning just lump after that. Just keep putting lump in there and and uh, and I always add lump as I go along anyway a, a big chunk here or there you know when I do add wood um, I like to keep a certain ratio going but you definitely don't need to keep feeding it the expensive uh, flavored wood through the whole entire cook because the meat's not going to take on much more smoke after 145 degrees the pores close up on the meat and such and this is a this is a great way to you know you can really control the amount of smoke flavor you put on even with these wood pits, you know. Give example, I could put more uh, lump here and less of the flavored wood, you know. Um, and you notice I'm not doing this with mesquite or anything like that. You notice I got a lot of smoke here pouring out too. Well, that's because this stuff is just catching, and that's why that's why I don't. Uh, close this door and run all this through the through the pit. You'll see that my stack, I've got hardly anything coming out there, just a little bit. Okay folks, you can see we've got a good fire going now. I'm gonna go ahead and close this door. We don't have the, a lot of smoke billowing. Um, another thing you'll notice that when I, before every time you wanna clean out your uh, residue underneath your grate, you wanna make sure you got a good, nice airflow underneath the wood. So like I said, we're after a nice efficient fire. Now I run it wide open, I let the pit come up to temp. Um, when I hit about 210 or so, that's when I'm gonna um, go ahead and uh, turn off the, uh, or close down the vent. If you look at the stack here, you can see I've got a nice thin blue smoke rolling out of this thing. It's still is coming up to temp. It has to come up and, you know, get it a decent temp. But uh, this is what we're after, okay? We don't want billowing white smoke. Now, this is smoke is going to darken up a little bit until it gets up to temp. But uh, you can see we're not, just dump, we're not just dumping a bunch of billowing white smoke on if we were ha cooking meat right now. That's what we want right there. Now, I mentioned earlier about firing these things up and you know every now and then if you're not using them just to drive the moisture out of them you'll see that I'm at right here at 200 degrees still got to come up a little bit to temp but if I open this thing real quick you'll, you'll notice look at all this moisture right so before you cook or anything like that you want to run it until until you get that moisture out of the, out of the pit so I, I tend to let mine run for about an hour hour and a half or so and then uh, do my cooking. Okay folks we're just under 220. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut this back but look, look at the smoke. Um, we got just what we want there. It's a nice thin light blue smoke. So we'll come over here we'll cut that down to about halfway just like that and we'll monitor our temperature. We, uh, we don't need to build an out of control fire. Um, we can control it with a not, low fire like that so that's burning efficiently and uh, it, the pit will respond well to it. If you get too much wood in there, too much lump, then uh, you're gonna have these big, it's gonna go way too hot, you're gonna damp it way back down and you'll, you'll forever be adjusting it. So we'll, I like to run them nice and efficient with less fuel. You see it's stabilizing here at 225. I like to get it about halfway in between there. I like to run it about 240, 245. And let it creep up to 250 at most. Okay folks, we're back. Let's take a look at things. <coughs> We're just at 250. I'll go ahead and back it down a little bit, but it's been running there for half an hour, so we're we're pretty good. You can see it didn't go crazy on me. <clears throat> you can see the uh, color of the 
smoke, nice and light, light blue. It's not billowing white. That's what we're after. Let's take a look at inside the chamber. What we were after also to do is, see we got most of the moisture out of here too, so it's almost ready to uh, be cooking on. Here's what our fire looks like. See, we've got flame. We've got nice, efficient fire there. <clears throat> That's what we're after right there. And you'll see over here where we've got our vent set. It's right about halfway. Again, smoke. That's what we want. Okay, folks, we've been running for about two and a half hours now, going on three. The uh, pit's holding temp as it should. Got a nice controlled fire. I'll uh, give you a peek inside the firebox here. See, we don't have this thing loaded up with much anything and it's doing its job. I'll also take a look inside the pit and you'll notice we're getting our sheen back. Now look at this, there's the difference. See that? I'm not coming up with black gooey stuff on my uh, fingers anymore. So we took care of our creosote issue. So there you go folks. This was a demo on uh, building an efficient fire. And again, we're after a nice thin blue smoke, which we've got. This is Rob from SmokingPit.com. This has been another vlog on barbecue. Take care, folks. Have a great day. Thanks for viewing.